I'm Matt Grambling. I'm here with Jim Lashinsky. Jim, uh, first of all, tonight we have the sideline cancer event, just like we did yesterday with the boys' game, today the girls' game. Uh, great event that we have here, raising money for cancer, uh, uh, trying to eliminate that terrible disease. Uh, a lot of really cool things. Did duck toss it yesterday. Uh, they had the kids playing at halftime. Just a really, really cool event. School, the whole school has gone crazy for this event and they're really doing their part to help alleviate cancer as much as that sounds like an impossibility but if everyone does a little bit that helps it really does and they're the people that are working with this is just fantastic but tonight's basketball game between the four sills lady rangers and the richland ram lady Ra lady rams should be a good event now richland has a seven and five record six and four in the conference but matt they're better than that. It seems like they're playing better than their record. Uh, I, I talked to Coach Cesari earlier, and she says that, that record is very, very deceiving. Now, of course, they're facing our four stills Lady Rangers, who have only lost one out of 14 games. They lost one game to Westmont in overtime. Uh, and, and in that game, uh, Ad, Addie Sherrado fouled out. Or, no, she goes injured. And... Uh, she was injured with about two minutes to go, and, um, and I, I think, um, well, that could be true. But uh, so, we, you know, they're up against it. But now they're going to play Westmont again coming up in February. And so that ought to be a really big rematch. Yeah, you, you mentioned Richland. Richland's got a, f a first year coach, uh, so you know that takes a lot of use too. So I'm, I'm sure that some growing pains there. When Coach Cesari says that they're better than her record, that's probably part of it because it, ta it takes a while, especially in a, at a tough conference like Laurel Highlands. Fort Stills, a real weird year that they don't have a single senior on the team, um, and yet. They still have the record they have, uh, and they had some really impressive wins in that Chambersburg tournament. Can you talk about that? Yes. You mentioned uh, not they do they do not have a senior. This is the first year that Coach Cesari and Coach Lashinsky have not had a senior on a team. There were a few years when they had uh, only one, but this is the first time that they only that they do not have a senior, and that lack of uh, a senior leadership sometimes comes to the front, but the girls have really stepped up. Now, this past weekend, as you said, they were at a tournament at Chambersburg. Uh, they played a school from Maryland called Garetti, and uh, they pretty much blew them out. But then they played Imhotep Prep, and that's a charter school from the Philadelphia area. And the, the girls from Imhotep, uh, car, uh, Coach Cesari told me they were more athletic, they were taller, they were more physical, but they lost to the Rangers. Uh, I think it was a three-point win, and I think that has a lot to do with the system that our coaches have put in in place and the way the girls have bought into that system. And that's so important, and we're anxious to see what happens here tonight against a very impressive Lady Richland Rams team. Yes, Emotep, they are just built for state championships, and, and to have a quality win like that, that it really says a lot about the Rangers, but they can't rest on that. They got to play a good game every game, and so we'll see how tonight goes. Hi, I'm Matt Grambling here with Jim Lashinsky and the head coach, Coach Carol Cesari. Coach, we have the sideline cancer event happening today. You were instrumental in bringing that here. Uh, can you talk about why you felt it was so important and some of the things we're doing? Uh, sure, sure. Uh, so uh, we saw sideline cancer. I know Jordan from coaching against him a couple years ago when he coached at Altoona. And I started watching sort of over the mountain kind of stuff. Over in Altoona and that, they were hosting them. And so I reached out to him last year and I said, look, I think we, we need to do something in the winter during basketball season. Because our fall is filled with lots of things. Our volleyball team does some great stuff with the teal out. Our football and volleyball team both do pink out. Our cheerleaders do pink out. So everybody's instrumental in raising funds for a good cause. And I thought, why not do sideline cancer for the basketball teams? Absolutely, and I, it, the school school's been very receptive. It's been fantastic. Jimmy, you want to talk a little bit about basketball? Carol, thank you for doing this. We talked to Jordan and Kathy a while ago about their input and instrumental, and they were so grateful to you for all you've done. All right, basketball. You're 13 and one. You are uh, have one loss in the conference to Westmont. 
tough loss. Uh, overtime, and you know you had some disadvantages with losing girls late in the fourth quarter. But you have the West One coming back. I actually think we might get a couple more chances at Westmont in uh, Laurel Highlands if we remain in the top four. Um, and right now they're sitting at number one and we're sitting at number two. So maybe we'll see them in the Laurel Highlands playoffs or actually even in District 6. So we knew that we might play them and two break. times, we might play them three times, we might play them four times this year. So. And they always say it's tough to beat a team three times in a year and you've got a chance to do that. But they've got the chance to do it to you too, so you got to be careful. All right, tonight's game. The Richland Lady Rams. Now, I believe they're uh, seven and five overall, six and four in the conference. And you told me earlier that you do not think their record is justifiable to their talent. I agree. I think that this is a team that is, um, they play hard. They have all the tools to win a lot of games. And uh, we're taking them very seriously tonight. Well, their coach said earlier that throughout the early part of the year, they, they started out strong. Five and one, kind of lost their way a little bit, but he said they're really coming together and he's looking forward to this matchup. And uh, he's he's very excited about playing the Four Stills Lady Rangers here. Thanks, yeah, we're excited to play them too. Jordan Kinsey's a good player. Uh, Laney Marshall's a good player. They, they have uh, a nice outside shooter. They have a girl that can drive the lane. They have some bigs that you know, post well and have great moves to the best. So they have a great team on that. We're gonna do what the Lady Rangers do best and um, hopefully we'll come out on the top side. And what is that? So uh, our game plan, we always like to make everybody run a little bit. So um, our girls tend to press even when we're not pressing. So they'll play a great defensive night tonight. And uh, that's always our big goal. And then um, we, when the girls are open, they shoot the ball. Hopefully we'll have a good shooting. And it doesn't seem like anyone shies away from shooting. If they've got an open shot, it looks like they're going to take it. And that's what you encourage. Yes, yes. And even the girls that come off the bench, they have that. They are not supposed to be gun shot because we all practice shooting. Nothing is designed for one player. Um, we, we need everybody to step up for us to continue the tradition that we have. The balance and the tradition is excellence. Yep, is excellence. Thank, Thank you, you, Coach. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, and good luck tonight. Hi, I'm Matt Gramling here with Jim Lashinsky, and we have head coach Paul Johnson. Coach, first year at uh, Richland as a head coach. To tell me how your season's going so far. Uh, season's going pretty good so far. I can't complain. The girls are working uh, very hard. Um, they had a lot of structure last year, so that definitely gives me a good head start. Um, and they, they're hungry. They, they want to go win, so they they like competition. So it's been a it's been a breeze so far. Coach. Uh, I was talking to Coach Cesare a little earlier, and uh, your record, I believe, is seven and five overall and six and four in a conference. Yes, sir. Coach Cesare says you're way better than that, and uh, she believes it's going to be a really tough game tonight. She said that uh, she has seen you play, and she has seen the job that you're doing. She's very impressed with both your girls and you. And uh, did you have some hard luck losses, or uh, you know, she just says you're better than your record? Tell us about that. Uh, so I'm, I'm never one to uh, blame officiating or anything like that. There's a lot of places that um, veteran head coaches can calm the team down a little bit, and I've missed some of those opportunities. So I've, I'm very humbled by, by her giving such kind words, but you can see the difference of the pedigree. I mean, once we get our legs about us, I think we'll, we'll close out a lot of those games. We're in every game. Um, they fight till the absolute end. So a lot of times, you know, they, they, it is very confusing, but this is a very tough conference, and a lot of people kind of kind of sleep on that because we'll have a Raider like Forest Hill so far. So we're we're excited for the challenge. I want to see how we stack up against you guys. So, Coach, so kind of a limited roster. What do you get? Twelve girls on the roster, eleven girls on the roster. Um, so you know you don't have a real deep bench, uh, and as you said, it's a tough conference, and uh, you know that, that's that's a challenge. Can you talk about that a little bit? Uh, yeah, so it, it really shows the resilience. A lot of teams can dig in seven, eight, nine girls on the bench for a good varsity game. Right now, we're usually running six at most. So the fact that our girls have the stamina, the mental endurance to stay in a game and, and just stay with the fight, that, that means tons. And that, that's, again, a credit to them. They, they don't see a challenge that they can't rise to. So I'm excited to see everything come together. We started off hot, we started off five and one. So that right there tells us that, that we can do it. We just have to get back to that, calm ourselves down a little bit, rock the storm and get back into it. All right, so Forest Hills Lady Rangers. I know they've 
basically they've been the class of the uh, Laurel Highlands for the last couple of years. What are you looking for from them tonight and uh, what can we expect? Well, uh, the main thing that I've noticed with them is every year it seems like their style changes just a little bit and they continuously evolve. So one thing that I'm looking for is honestly just the, the challenge. They look different from every team we've played so far and it's not necessarily the size, it's not the shooting, it's not the defense, it's all of those. And that's a credit to them. I mean, year after year they continuously send out a team that can beat you in multiple ways. So. Um, I want to see our girls step up to the challenge. I want to see how we stack up against them. Obviously, we look for the victory. Um, but if not, I don't believe there's too much to learn from losses. However, against a team of this pedigree, it definitely really gives you a test of where you're actually at, what type of team you actually are. So I'm excited for that. Forest Hills has a, a young team. They don't have a senior on the squad. Now, your team doesn't have many seniors either, as far as I, uh, I know, right? Three. Three seniors. Coming into this game, with, without a senior, you're gonna. I, I've seen four stills, and I see, as you said, they play different styles of basketball. They run, they shoot, they're not outstanding in any of those areas. But put them all together, and they, and they yeah, take pick your poison exactly. Well, coach, uh, good luck tonight. I hope you uh, enjoy this visit here to Four Stills, and uh, hope everything goes well for you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, coach. Thank you. Hi, I'm here with Jordan and Kathy Griffith back again for another night. But welcome back. We had a great day yesterday. Appreciate you having us back here. Last night was a great night at Forest Hills. They got a big win last night too. That was a good team that they played. That was a good River Valley team and uh, it was exciting to be here and they walked out with the trophy and so it was awesome. It really was. And you're out in the hall, you're selling t-shirts and uh, how, how's been your reception with the Forest Hills people? It has been remarkable. I really like your sense of community and the administrators are awesome, the coaches are awesome, and the whole school community is fabulous. So it's been a really good experience for us. Okay, and, and so we're here, sideline cancer, trying trying to beat that horrible, horrible disease. Can you give us your message uh, one more time? Yeah, so I'll let my mom do <clears throat> Well, pancreatic cancer is the second leading cause of cancer deaths in the United States. And so like Alex Trebek, and Patrick Swayze, the uh, actor. Many people have been affected by pancreatic cancer, and it's time to take it off the sideline and get it to the finish line for a cure. And we know that together we can, if we believe always that we can. Yeah, it, we're really, uh here we have two families that we're really supporting. Uh, Karen Vermillion, who's the sister of our principal, and Danielle Giles, who's a teacher here. Wonderful, wonderful person. I've talked with her for years. Um, can you talk about how what we're doing benefits them? Yeah. And so that's, we kind of have a dual mission. My mom there talked about the pancreatic cancer side, which took my uh, father's life and her husband's life. But the secondary aspect is helping out community members. Five dollars of the gear, the long sleeve, the hoodie or the t-shirts that we're selling over there go directly to cancer patients. And we always kind of say that the community is the, is the engine and my mom and I have just kind of created the wheels with our online platform. And so tonight we're able to come together for Karen and for Danielle and at the same time we raise funds for them because we know cancer is expensive. Uh, we witnessed it with my dad. Uh, but we're also able to do, to do something that we're passionate about, which is raise pancreatic cancer awareness. So it's kind of a two for one. It's an awareness night, plus it's helping people in your communities, using the sport that we all love, basketball, and using our community members, for which we all love as well. And it's just been a pleasure to get to know the Forest Hills community. We can't wait to come back next year. Now, this has been fantastic, and I thank you guys for your message. And and uh, you know, the more we can do to eradicate this, the better. And so, thank you guys, and I um, hope we have another good night. Yeah, absolutely, Welcome to Sidman, Pennsylvania. I'm Matt Grambling. I'm the play-by-play -play announcer tonight. Alongside me is back again is Jim Lashinsky, is my color analyst. Welcome, Jim. Thank you, Matt. Another year, another good game here with the uh, Fort Hills Lady Rangers and the Richland Lady Rams. And both teams are looking for a good game. We spoke to the coaches earlier, and uh, even though Richland's come, coming in with a 7-5 and five record, 6-4 and four in the conference, both coaches, the coach from Richland and, of course, uh, Coach Cesari and Richland coaches, uh, Coach Paul Johnson in his first year, both have said that uh, Richland has 
uh, played better than their record and are looking for a, a, a very good, exciting game here. Sideline cancer event tonight. We'll talk about that after the singing the national anthem by Miss Alyssa Walker, who does a wonderful job game after game. And then the starting lineups. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright Jerry Kaufman, the other umpire. We just had uh, Winter Officials Appreciation Week last week, and so uh, even though that week is over, we still appreciate our officials, and uh, good luck to them also. If you notice, the, uh, the Rams, the Lady Rams, are starting uh, three seniors, a junior and a sophomore. Uh, so they are a veteran team. Uh, on the other hand, Forest Hills is a veteran team that does not have a senior on the roster. They start four juniors and a sophomore. And uh, that, of course, looks good for the future as our Lady Rams come into this game with a 13-1 record and uh, have that one loss is in the conference to Westmont. Richland comes into the game with a 7-5 record, 6-4 in the conference. And uh, we're looking forward to a great matchup between these two Laurel Highland Lady, Ring, Lady basketball teams. Last year, whenever the Lady Rangers played, you could pretty much tell by the playing time who for the starting lineup was going to be. Lexi Henderson, Arissa Britt, 
Anna Berkey, and Addison Sherrado. But I wasn't sure who the fifth one, and it turned out to be sophomore Olivia McCleary. And boy, she's done a nice job in the starting lineup as she wins the tip. Back to Lexi Henderson. She clears away from the defense, and Forest Hill's going to start the offense first. Richland in, I'm not sure what the defense is quite yet. It looks like a 1-3-1. One, one. Lexi Henderson with the three from the corner. Doesn't go. Olivia McCleary with the offensive board and the putback. Nice start for the Lady Rangers. Forest Hill's going to start in a press like they're accustomed to. We've seen over the years. And there's going to be a carry. That was number 13. Emma Matovich was not expecting Arissa Britt to come up at her like that. Went to pause and a little too long of a pause. So Arissa Britt going to inbound the ball. She's going to get it into Addison Schrado, middle of the key. Kicks it out to Lexi. Lexi over Anna Berkey. Leaving McCleary. Get a little back dribble to clear some room. Pull way around the horn. Kick out Anna Berkey. She's going to fire it up for three. That's going to be long. Battle for the rebound. Who comes up with it? Arissa Britt. She drives middle of the key. Drop pass to Sherrado. Skip pass to Berkey. Berkey to the corner. Lexi Henderson is going to take the three from there. She hits it. Lexi Henderson is the Rangers leading scorer, averaging 14.7 uh, points a game. And there's a steal by Arissa Britt. She's going to go down left side, left hand layup. Highly contested, Anna Berkey's going to try to go up, and just the tall sophomore, Laney Marshall, just too tall for Anna Berkey, gets the block there. Now they're going to break the press. Laney's going to bring it down the middle. She thought about shooting it. Kick over to Emma Matovich. She's going to find the right lane, but a tipped away by Lexi Henderson. Notice number one for Richland, Laney Marshall. In speaking to the coaches earlier from, from Forest Hills, they're, they're very impressed with her. They also think that she can drive the lane a lot more than she does, uh, and she plays outside a lot. Uh, and, and perhaps uh, we may see more of her driving the lane today. Long shot by her does not go. Livy McCleary's going to take her first shot from the short corner. That one's going to go off the rim and bounce out. Rebound there by Emma Matovich. She's going to go well, she's with speed down the lane. Excuse me, that wasn't Emma Matovich. That was Lake and Roman. And a nice block by Addison Strato. Knocked it out of bounds. Richland will put it in under the board. Four seals in a 2-3 uh, during the inbounds. Richland gets in, rotates around. And a Skip pass. That one doesn't go by Matovich, but kicked out there by uh, Avery Marshall. And foul. Who are they going to call that one on? There's a few of them down there. Uh, that's on Addy Shrado. Uh, when when Four Sills lost their lone game to Westmont, Addy Shrado was injured late in the game, and Arissa Britt fouled out in the fourth quarter. And uh, the game eventually went into overtime. Uh, Addison Sherrata was a, a strong presence under the board and in the key for the Lady Rangers. And she is, uh, she would be sure, sorely missed when she's on the bench. So leading scorer for Richland, Jordan Kinsey. She knocks in both of her free throws. And Ford Hill's going to bring the ball down. A 2-2-1 half court press. Oh, and a steal from behind. Nope, Arissa holds on to it. But it is going to be a jump ball. Ball goes to Richland on the alternating possession. About two and a half minutes gone in the quarter, and the Rangers are up five to two. Looks like Forest Hill is going to be in a man-to-man -man defense here. Roman over Matovich. Up to Laney Marshall. A long shot. That one's going to be short. Anna Berkey with the good box out. I think we're going to foul on uh, number 10 for Richland. That's Avery Marshall. <laughs> Anna Berkey, a little vertically challenged. <laughs> Makes rebounding very tough, but she had great positioning. And even though Avery Marshall is uh, much taller, drew the foul just because of her inside position. Good job, uh, good job by her. 
Tried to pass it into Sherrado, was tipped away. Berkey's going to fire up to three, and that's nothing but net. Coach Cesare told us that their girls are trained, are, are coached not to be shy about shooting. It doesn't matter which one it is. If they have an open shot, they're to take it. Almost a steal there by the Rangers. Doesn't go through, but now that Olivia McCleary steps in front of that one for the steal. Rissa Britt going to bring the ball down. Drive to the left side. She's going to get fouled up front by Lady Marshall. That's the Lady Rams' second foul. Which normally isn't too big of a deal, but uh, Coach Johnson told us they only go five or six deep, and so you don't want to pick up a whole lot of fouls whenever you don't have a, a deep bench behind you. Coach Paul Johnson, his first year for Richland, uh, he took over for uh, Greg Burke, who coached the uh, the Lady Rams last year, and before that was uh, the coach of the uh, the boys Rams team. Four steals, a couple steals. Ball bouncing around there. That press always effective. With all that, with all that pressure, that gets a foul on number 32, Jordan Kinsey. Again, leading scorer, senior, 5'10 for the uh, Lady Rams. Rissa Britt's going to shoot two from the from the foul line. That one a little short. See if she can make the adjustment for the second one. Four seals up eight to two. And she does. One out of two for Arissa. Oh, a quick press breaker for Richland. Deep ball for number three, Lake and Roman, and she nails that one. Tickled the bottom of the net. Arissa Britt is going to drive that side. And she's going to pick up a foul on Jordan Kinsey. Her second back-to-back -back fouls for Kinsey. Coach Johnson was hoping for a charge call, 50-50 call. That one went in favor of the Rangers. That's their fourth foul, and we still have more than half of the first quarter to go. Oh, that one slid right through Lexi Henderson's hands. Ball over to Richland, so the foul didn't hurt Richland on the scoreboard. But again, they can't really afford to rack up too many fouls here. Matovich got some speed whenever she's dribbling that ball. She... Inbounds pass tipped away by McCleary, picked up by Berkey. She's going to drive the lane, kick it out to Britt. Britt's going to try to go around Marshall. She's going to go up. It's going to bounce around the rim, and Laney comes up with the uh, Laney comes up with the rebound. But uh oh, we have Avery Marshall, who is Laney's sister. She's limping. She is hurting. Uh, she has wraps on both of her knees, and um, the ball was the officials called timeout. Uh, because of that injury, and I believe the ball will go back to Richland because they had possession when she was limping a little bit, and um, good officiating will, will always stop a play if uh, a girl is injured and uh, the com it, the, it doesn't come into play on a fast break or something like that. Correct. It's that way it doesn't hurt the opposing team. Um, nice having a former official sitting beside me to give us those, those inside looks there. Mm -hmm. that. Um, but again, that, that's going to that's gonna hurt without a whole lot of depth on Richland. Uh, we'll see We'll see who they bring in there. I didn't notice the number. 30 seconds timeout, Richland, Lady Rams. And Richland's going to take a timeout. It looks like number 21, Lena Roman's going to step in for Avery Marshall. Um, by the way, we do have our trainer here, Jamie Long, uh, who's – New to Forest Hills, uh, we, we got her from Portage. Excellent trainer. Um, whenever my JV team went over, my JV baseball team go, went over to Portage to play, um, she really took care of my kids just like she took care of the Portage kids. So um, here uh -huh. she is working with, with uh, Avery. Heard nothing but good things about the job that uh, Jamie Long does for the Rangers. Yeah, she's really stepped up in uh, – I, I saw uh, Coach Nasseri posted some pictures of her leading the girls in the weight room, and, you know, the, she's doing a lot. Good asset for Forest Hill. So, Richland does 
retain possession. They're going to try to break that press, and they do. And as we said before the timeout, that is number 21, Lena Roman in for Richland. Tight man-to-man -man defense for four steals. Laney's going to drive. She's going to find Kinsey underneath. That does not go. Defensive board by Addison Sherrado. Nice pass by Laney Marshall underneath. I can see why the four steals coaches are so impressed with her. Checking into four steals for the first time, number 13, Miley Gondola, and number 10, Julia Chunta. Both sophomores. Julia coming off a fantastic volleyball season that she just, uh, I couldn't, couldn't even guess how many assists that she had. Uh, unreal. And Miley Gondola is an outstanding softball player. Uh, I've often said that I've seen her practice a lot uh, in a batting cage with her dad, Jay Gadula, and I've never seen a player attack the ball as, as relentlessly as she does. Well, to point that out, um, you know, she was only a freshman last year, was a starting catcher, and batted cleanup for the varsity team on a really, really good varsity softball team. So that says a lot right there. So Richland with the ball. Trying to find some headway there. Schlinter putting a little bit of pressure on. Roman to Marshall. Julia try, trying to put the pressure on. Oh, and that one skipped away from Lake and Roman. A little extra spin on that. The four seals with the ball. You know, it's only nine to five. 215 left to go in the quarter. Ford Steele's got to find some ways to put the ball in the basket. Aston is going to make a move. That one doesn't fall, and, and she's going to get a jump ball call after uh, the, I don't know if I'm going to quite give the rebound to Richland there, but Laney, Laney Marshall uh, and also Coach Johnson did not like that call. They thought that uh, she was fouled. So Lexi Henderson, three from the corner. That doesn't go. Laney Marshall comes up with the board. She gets over Matovich. Matovich up to Roman. Whole way across the key. In the Kinsey. She's going to go up hard, and she gets two. It is a one-possession game right now. Nine to seven, favor of the Lady Rangers. Miley's going to drive. Oh, a nice right to left move, but it does not go. Rissbrick comes up with the offense board. Lexi Henderson from deep. That one doesn't go. Julie Chunta with the offensive board. She gets it out to Schrado. Second, third chance points for the Rangers. Let's see if they can convert. Chunta looking for an opening. Henderson drives now. She makes a little fake. Does not go. Marshall comes up with the rebound. She's going to push it, and that is... Uh, Roman, she's going to get fouled by Julia Chunta. That was Lena Roman on the drive, and she'll get two foul shots. Just under a minute to go. Four so will be sending in. Three substitutes here. Ava Mole, number 32. Uh, number 22 is uh, Olivia McCleary back into the game. And of course, number 25, Anna Berkey. Ava Mole, only a freshman, her first time on the floor. And Elena converts both of them. Tied up the game at nine. Kick Long up pass. Burton. She's going to go for three. Does not go, but there's a freshman to clean it up. Ava Mall with an important two points right there. Richland got 43 seconds to see if they can match it or better it. So we've got Lake and Roman with the ball. 
Oh, and there's a nice move there, but tipped away by Berkey off of Godola's hands and out of bounds. Richland retains possession. 28 seconds to go in the first quarter. Rangers up by two. Richland with a real spread out set here from the inbounds. They're going to kick it out to Laney Marshall. She's going to drive that left side, and she puts it in and one. That's what Coach Cesari was talking to me about earlier, about her potential driving the wing, uh, slicing in there, and she converted that deuce and is going for the three-point play now. So foul on number 22, Livy McCleary, her first. Laney Marshall to shoot the foul shot to tr try to convert the old-fashioned three-point play for the lead. It rims out. McCleary comes up with the board. Four steals with 21 seconds left to try to take the lead before the buzzer. Run a little bit of a weave up top. Weave the score. Their Britt finds the hole, but that one is off the foot of number 31, Sasha Garnett. She checked in uh, during the foul shot. Checking back in for Forest Hills is number 10, Julia Chunta, and number 24, Lexi Henderson. Try to get a little bit of offense here on the floor with 10.6 seconds. Everybody running, gets set in the box formation. Pass into Henderson. She's going to try to left the one. Wow, there's a new shot in her repertoire. Very nice. Richland's going to try to get the shot off. Avery. Oh. Oh. Freshman trying to do a little bit too much. Right at the buzzer, she fouls with her body in a block. And now you have to realize that that shot was taken maybe three or four feet inside the half court line. Chances of making that shot, percentages of making that shot are not good. Sending number 21. Uh, Leanne Roman to the line for three shots now with no time on the first quarter clock. Right, because everyone says, well, it was a half-court shot. You know, guess what? That half-court shot counts for three points, so she gets to shoot all three. Yep. She's converted the first two. And I think the four stills coaches are explaining that uh, procedure. And she converts all three to give the Rams a lead at the end of the first quarter. The Rams' first lead of the game, 14-13. I don't think that uh, Coach Cesari was expecting that score at the end of the first quarter. Uh, she was saying uh, uh, this was going to be a very, very tough ball, tough matchup, and uh, Richland is proving that. Coach Johnson has her, his, uh, his girls ready to play. Absolutely. Right now we have our varsity cheerleaders leading us in a cheer. Thank you, girls. Great job. Uh, Jim, pretty full tonight. Uh, Sideline cancer event brought a lot of people out. We got a really full student section there. Up front's our junior high boys basketball team. They're as loud as can be, led by Josh Myers as always. And uh, all of them like to have a good old time. Uh, filling in behind them, it looks like a lot of the junior high girls basketball team and uh, some other students too. Yeah, that's, that's a nice student section. Absolutely, and you know, because of the way the Laurel Highland schedule, Panned out tonight, the boys who many times they, the girls support, support the boys and vice versa, but the boys are playing tonight in Bedford. So a lot of those players and their followers, their parents and fans are at Bedford tonight. That would have really packed this place. Absolutely. So Richland not only got the lead at the buzzer, they also start out with the ball. They're gonna try to go back door, but Rissa Britt led that one and she cut off that pass. Rissa's going to drive the right side. She's going to find Anna Berkey. She's going to make a move. Little shot on the sideline. Not sure if Kinsey got a hand on that or not. Marshall tried to get it out to Roman. Didn't work. McCleary for the long two. She was a step inside that three-point line. Her fourth point on the day. So Matovich trying to set it up here. Lena Roman, but blocked by McCleary. Britt's going to push it against uh, Lake and Roman. Over to Berkey, back to Britt. Britt looked underneath at McCleary, thought about it. I don't think the lane was quite there wide enough. Henderson to Berkey. She's going to drain the three. Nope. Attempted a three from the top, but did not go. 
a little too much iron there. So Lake and Roman with the ball now. Into Kinsey. Oh, nice little move, but does not fall. Livy McCleary picks up the basketball off the hard court. Berkey coming around. Henderson to Britt. Berkey's going to go for three, and then she hits that one. She was four feet beyond the arc for that shot. Berkey never lacks confidence. I, I, since she was a freshman, she's it's go, go, go for her at all times, and, and you like love that. The Energizer Bunny, Bunny theory there. Well, she thought about going for that still. Wasn't quite there. Blake and Roman with the ball. Laney Marshall is going to kick it out. That shot does not go. Rissa Britt with the rebound. She's trying to get around the whole defense. Not quite there yet. Ball tipped away. Out to Henderson. She's going to shoot up the three. That one doesn't go. Anna Berkey comes up with the offensive board. Out to Henderson. She puts a little drive. Little runner. Does not go. Marshall with the rebound. Matovich put it, pushing the ball up. Long shot there by Lake and Roman, does not go. <laughs> and ball to Forest Hills. Arisa Britt leads the uh, Rangers in assists and steals. And she's sort of like the, uh, the engine that drives the machine. Said four seals doesn't have a senior on, on the team. I feel a little guilty about that because I coached those seniors in elementary basketball. That was my, that was my daughter's grade. Uh, and none of them quite made it, but Arissa Britt was on the team. And we didn't win a whole lot of games, but when we won games, it was because Arissa stole the ball at half court and went down and scored. If she wasn't there, <laughs> we didn't have a chance to win that game. She, she was a tough player even way back in those days. Good defense there by the Rangers. Prevent Richland from scoring. Henderson's going to make a move. Not there. Out to Schrodo. She's going to try her first three. That one doesn't go. A little short. I believe the entire starting lineup has shot at least one three each now. And nice move there by Lena. And that's what Schrodo does best. She is just a defensive presence. She knows how to stand her, get her hands up nice and high. And she blocks a lot of shots that way. And alters shots that she doesn't block. She's going to try to drive the right side. And we're going to get a blocking call on number 32 from Richland. That's, uh, that's Jordan tough. Kinsey. Uh, that's uh, uh, Paul Johnson, the coach from Richland, is not happy with that call. And that is Kinsey's third foul for the leading score in, with 4.05 left in the second period. Again, without a deep bench, that's tough. And she is questioning uh, the official about why I had that foul called on me. And uh, official Jack McDougal is explaining that. And now Coach Johnson is asking him the same thing. So checking in for Richland for the first time is number five, Alyssa Amenti. Again, this is Richland going deeper in their bench that they're used to. Fort Steele's put a few subs back in. The uh, girls have been on the floor before. Uh, Aston Chirado with uh, missed that foul shot, but she does grab a hold of that ball and, uh, to force the jump ball. Ball to Fort Steele's. Miley Godola comes back in for Chirado. Miley's going to drive down that left side. She's going to try to kick it out, but Laney's Marshall's wingspan got a hold of that ball and prevented that from happening. She's going to go down the left side, throw a little scoop shot off, but she's going to get fouled. I believe this is going to be on number 10, Julia Chunta. Laney Marshall will be shooting two shots. Rangers are up by four, 18 to 14. 3.51 to go in the second quarter. She hits the first one. Go, 
and converts them both. 18-16, two-point game. Miles is going to drive down the right side. A lot of real young faces out there on the floor right now. Nice move by McCleary, but she misses everything. And Marshall gets another rebound. So a, a many there with the ball for the first time. She does a good job not turning that one over. But now uh, Roman drives down. Kick out to Lena Roman. And she's going to hit that one. A long two. Must have had a toe on the line. Tied up the game at 18. Three minutes to go in the second quarter. Ball's going to be scrambled around. Ball's going to be tipped out of bounds by Godola. Not a whole lot of offense happened for the four seals there. A lot of standing, and Coach Desari is not real happy about that. Uh, she's going to get Arissa Britt, her normal point guard, back into the game. Put a little bit of a field general out there. Help the Rangers. The original's going to take uh, try to take another lead. They've had one so far this game. Ball's going to get tipped around. And that one's going to go out on Chunta. Richland ball. Shot there by uh, Manny. Does not go. Lexi Henderson's going to push the ball off the court. She's going to drive. Find it to Rissa. Rissa off the living Cleary. She's going to shoot the three and knock it in. Big shot for the sophomore. Seven points for Olivia. Oh, nice pass. Oh, it didn't quite get the handle on it by Kinsey, but a nice pass uh, by Marshall. Chunta came up with a loose ball. Chunta's not going to fire the three. And, and she, 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 that's a great shot. Back-to-back three. -back threes for the sophomores. That 18-18 tie has now bloomed with those six points into a 24-18 lead for the Rangers. Two big shots. Oh, and there's a tip away by Maul, but doesn't quite come up with it. Romano up to Marshall. Marshall to Amenti. A Roman, she's going to try to go around Maul. The cycle continues for Richland. Oh, and a nice entry pass to Kinsey. Does not go. Maul comes up with the defensive board. She pushes it. A lot of speed by the freshman, but that one's tipped away by Laney Marshall. They got to get used to her. Her wingspan has just really been very troublesome for Forest Hills today. After this game for Lady Rangers, 25, Anna Berkey. So Anna Berkey, number 25, checks back into the game. She's going to give Lexi Henderson a little breather. Oh, a nice entry pass to Kinsey, and she's going to put the lefty in for two. A minute to go in the quarter. Four seals up four. Another basket would feel really good right about now. Chunta's going to take the long two. That one's going to go off the flange and does not go. Marshall with the board. She tried to kick it out, but Berkey right there. Play some defense. She's open at the top. Not quite an offense set. McCleary with the short from, uh, corner shot. Does not go. And a nice move by Britt. And a nice little... We call that a legal moving screen there by McCleary to give Britt the lane to the hoop. Timeout there by Coach Johnson as they were struggling to get that ball up court. He was worried about a 10 second call. So good job by Coach Johnson to prevent that turnover. 26 to 20 for Forest Hills. You know, Matt, Forest Hills Lady Rangers have been 
probably the class of the area for the last 10 years as far as the Laurel Highlands uh, Girls Conference goes. And they had never had a district championship until 2010. Never had one. And since 2010, they have had 10 district championships since 2010. Two years they have not had that. That says an unbelievable, that makes an unbelievable statement about what the ch coach Sari and coach Lashinsky have done with the Lady Rangers. Scott Lashinsky has been uh, a member of the coaching staff, has coached with Carol now for 22 years. And together they have uh, molded what I think is the premier girls basketball team consistently, at least, in the area. Absolutely. I don't, I don't think there's too many people that can argue with that. There is a, a banner hanging in this gymnasium that says, Coach Carol Ciceri, PIAA 4A Girls Basketball Coach of the Year in the state, 2019-2020 season. That season ended with a 26-1 record and was called off as they reached the Elite Eight because of the COVID virus. They could not finish that. Oh, nice oh, steal there by Olivia. Liv McCleary. That was a two-hand attempt to, to block and ends up turning to a steal because she just stuck in her fingers. Oh, nice move by Maul. She's going to get blocked. Nope, they're going to call it a foul by number 21, Lena Roman. With only 1.1 second on the board, Olivia Maul will shoot. Ava Maul will shoot uh, two shots. That is the sixth team foul for Richland. Forest Hills has five team fouls in the first half. Eva Mall gets the roll and the foul shot. Push Forest Hills up by seven. Checking in for the first time for Forest Hills is number 20, Morgan Godola. That's Miley's little sister. She's only a freshman. And number 12. Number 12. Mackenzie Johns. Mackenzie Johns, Jr. And Haven knocks him in. Big shot for the young girl. Good job by Berkey not fouling Marshall there at the end. Nice quarter for the Rangers, who was losing after the first quarter by one, has turned that into an eight-point lead, 28-20 at halftime for the Lady Rangers. And I'm sure if you would touch, coach, talk to uh, the coach from Richland, uh, Paul Johnson, he would feel that the calls went against him a little in that half as he uh, was questioning the officials several times. But as we look at the halftime clock, 28-20, Forest Stills is up, and hopefully they can continue that lead the rest of the game. Down on the court right now as part of the sideline cancer activities, we're going to have the future Lady Rangers playing against each other. Uh, it looks like grades five versus grade six. Don't quote me on that because I'm not, uh, not well-versed at that age. But um, good luck to both of these girls. And what a thrill for, for them to play in front of a, a crowd this size and on this floor tonight. So good luck, girls. We'll be back for the second half. Welcome back to Sidman, Pennsylvania. We had the halftime with the fifth versus sixth grade girls. Uh, Coach uh, Ciceri and Coach Lashinsky did it as they always do whenever they have the girls play. They had their varsity girls standing there watching them, gave them all high fives coming off the court. That's how you inspire that, that next group to come on. Then we had the Chuck and Duck uh, competition, which I don't know how, but that Dane Lashinsky kid, he came up with another victory two days in a row. Good for him, right? Right. But, you know, you said before about uh, the, the girls standing there watching the young girls play, and I've alluded to, to the strength of this Forest Hills girls basketball program. Years and years ago, Coach Asiri instituted a dribble, comp not a competition, a dribble team at the elementary school. The girls did nothing but go and practice dribbling and put on exhibits for the school, and it, things evolved. And now with the success that the, the girls have had, the success breeds success. And it's now, it's, it's almost an honor for the girls to be a member of the uh, Forest Hills Rangers girls basketball team. And the, the numbers are always strong. 
uh, the, the competition that they have within themselves, in their own locker rooms, in their own basketball you know, practices, builds this camaraderie. And uh, the, the coaches, I think, do a wonderful job establishing that. And I tell my baseball players, I said, those elementary, those little league players, they know who you are, okay? And so when you talk to them, Man, they're going to remember that. And so those girls walking off the court giving Arissa Britt a high five, <laughs> Olivia McCleary, who right there put in two more, and she gives her a high five. They remember that. So nice start there for the Lady Rangers. Ball tipped around there. They're still going after it. Come up with it. Anna Berkey comes up with that ball there. Arissa Britt, she's going to drive in. That ball's going to get swatted away, out of bounds, and that ball goes to the Rangers. Rangers lead is built up to 10 points now. 30 to 20. Britt to throw it in. Cross. Over to Henderson. Step back. I think uh, number three, Lake and Roman, got a hand on that shot to give her credit for the block. Ball bounced around off the Lady Rangers last and fell ball to Richland. Lexi thinks that uh, she got a piece of her arm, but no call. Look clean, to, but I'm a whole heck of a far away, but. Right. So there by Matovich with her oh. speed, and she goes down that left-hand layup. She nice drive. Full court. She uses her speed well. Brett into Sherrado. She spins around, gets it out to McCleary. McCleary's going to drive down. She's going to try the left hand. That doesn't fall. Britt with the offensive board. Tipped away there by Matovich, and that ball is back to Fort Steele. Anna Berkey's going to take this one out. Takes a nice, easy pass into Britt. Britt's going to work it. Matovich thought about the steal from behind, but Britt got out of the way. Anna Berkey from deep, and that one kicks out. Who's going to come up with it? McKenzie comes up with the defensive board, and a foul by Britt. Worth the effort. I believe that's Britt's first foul on, on the day, and it will be. Fort Steele's going to go a full court press. Looks like a man to man full court press uh, compared to their normal uh, 1 2 1 1 press that they're well known for. So, Kinsey into Marshall. Marshall's going to drive it off. She's going to keep on going. Ball's going to bounce around, but uh, not a turnover there. Lena Roman comes up with it. Into Kinsey. Kinsey again leading score. She doesn't get it, but she works and gets the offensive board. And the put back the hoop and the harm. So after four stills extended that lead out to 10, it's now down to six with the foul shot that could lower it down to five. Keep in mind that uh, Jordan Kinsey, the leading scorer, sat for a good part of the second quarter in, with three fouls. And she's back out there now. And that certainly had to take away from the uh, overall prowess of the Lady Rams in that second quarter. And uh, also hurting the uh, Rams right now, number 10, Avery Marshall, starter. Uh, she's been sitting down on the baseline with ice on her knee. Uh, we're hoping that uh, she turns out to be okay. Um, definitely never ever want to see an athlete injured like that. Absolutely not. So Richland's going to inbound the ball. And yeah, late, uh, Laney Marshall did not see the defender standing there, and she took a little hop step before that dribble down. Good call by the official for the travel. Hmm. The officials addressing the crowd. I think there was a little one close to the uh, baseline there and just held things up a little bit so the little girl didn't get injured. I've seen them talking to the, the, uh, the student section a couple times and uh, Keeping things under control, I guess. So Anna Berkey with a drive and a, a reach foul there by Laney Marshall. Just a really unnecessary foul by her. That's and, her second. Yeah, Berkey was heading to the corner, was not going to the lane. So inbounds to Britt. Good job by her coming across. Sherrado back to Berkey. Berkey for three. That's going to hit the rim. Uh, Kinsey comes up with the rebound, though. Marshall. She's a nice weapon to have. I, I, I'm really impressed by her today. Shot from the corner for three by number three, Lake and Roman, but it rims out. 
Cleary gets the rebound and she gets it over to Britt. Britt's gonna continue driving out to Berkey. Berkey's gonna take that three again and she's gonna get fouled on the shot. The, the, the initial shot was clean, but she didn't give her room to land, correct? Is that right. is that the call there, but Mr. Official? After the ball, I mean, she was actually in the, uh, the ball was out of her hands, but she was still in the act of shooting it, uh, even though it was clear, and then she was contacted, and that's what uh, the official's explaining to uh, Coach Johnson. And now. So Anna Berkey's gonna get three foul three shots. shots. She makes the first. That foul was on Matovich, by the way. It, her first of the game, so she's she's okay. Oop, second one rims out. Diana's going to see if she can knock in the second out, out of three. There she goes. She does get two out of three. Good shooting by her. Lead up to eight. Richland's going to try to split four. Matovich split four defenders for four seals. She gets it over to Roman, and a nice pass into Kinsey. A really good set. Coach Desari's not going to be happy with one girl dribbling through four of her defenders, though. There's a deep three by Lexi Henderson. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Celebration by the, the student section on that shot. There's Matovich using that speed going down, and she's going to draw a foul. She is just uh, wearing out Forest Hills. Foul on Anna Berkey, her first, team third for the half. Four minutes and 50 seconds to go. Forest Hills up 35 26. Let's see now, it's 35 27. Makes the first. And Coach Cesare is going to take a 30-second timeout. We're going, to, we're going to talk over. I told you I didn't think that she'd like the uh, one girl splitting her all of her defenders there on that press, and so that's probably something she's going to talk about. Oh, checking in for Richland for the first time is going to be number 11, Jalen Johns. Again, that's, you know, Coach Johnson told us before the game they go five or six deep in a game, and you know the injury to one of her, one of his starters, you know that that hurts. They had to go deeper, but that is now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine girls that have stepped onto the court for Richland, so almost double uh, what he initially intended on playing, and only down eight. You know, normally if you're used to playing five or six and you go nine. Yes. Something's ugly. And you know, when you hang, let them hang around, you never know what's gonna happen. Absolutely. So, Matovich is gonna have one shot left. She shot one before the timeout. Now she'll get her second one after the timeout. And does not go. Good box out by Lexi Henderson to come up with that defensive board. Laney puts some pressure on. Somebody's open. Britt splits him, three on one. But Berkey could not get the shot off. She tried to pass it. That one goes across and out of bounds over to Richland. Miley Godola reporting in for the Rangers. You get a two on one or, or a three on one almost that was. You expect to score there and four steals didn't. Richland gets the ball in. Four Seals went back to their 1-2-1-1 one, one, one press. Julia Chuncha cuts that off, which gets it to Britt. Britt over to Godola, but that one doesn't go. Britt with another board. She's got a ton of boards today. Around the horn, Miley Godola for three. That one doesn't go. Julia Chuncha tips that one out to Lexi Henderson. That one doesn't go. Three shots for Four Seals on that trip down the court, and they get zero points out of it. Not sure what the shooting percentage is, Matt, but I don't think it's very good. I don't think Coach Lasiri, Coach Lashinsky will be very happy with that. Nope, not at all. So there's Matovich. She gets uh, that one tipped away from her. Godola comes up with it over to Chunta. She's going to get doubled. She kicks it up to Godola. Godola crosses the half court line. Henderson, little head fake. She drives baseline. Runner, and she gets two. That's Ten a, points now for Lexi. 
She'll be the first one in double digits for Forest Hills. Still by Chunta. And we'll see what. Okay, foul on Richland, number 11. Uh, that is Jalen Johns who just stepped in. Uh, everybody kind of stopped there for a second, wasn't sure what, what we were going to get, and uh, we get a foul on Richland. Back into the game for Lady Rangers, number 22, Olivia. So, Olivia McCleary checks back in, and Anna Berkey checks back in for Forest Hills. Gives Chunta and Sherado a little break there. Again, a little bit of a, a weave to score, as, as Coach Cesari likes to call it, up top. The, little, the handoffs. Oh, nice pass by Britt to McCleary, but she's going to go a little short on the shot. And Richland comes up with the ball again. Forest Hills has some nice offensive sets, some nice shots, but they're getting no points out of it. They've had some nice passes, and, and you have to capitalize on those. Rebound. So that one comes up. Britt comes up with yet another rebound. She's going to push it. A nice stop dribble there to get it out of problem. Berkey, that one's a little short on that shot there. Almost brought. Oh, and then a foul on Britt. And Coach Asiri says, why? Yes. Why was set down here in the backcourt like that? But you, she also doesn't want to take the aggressiveness away from her girls. Uh, whenever I was talking to uh, Scott, the assistant coach, about his girls and say, okay, what would you say is one word, one word to describe your team? And his word was relentless. Yeah, and, and I, I agree with him. And, and that's a that's been a long time trait for yes. Forest Hills, and it, it's that's really nice to have. There's nothing else to say there. They're, they're not real tall. They're not the best shooters in the world. They're not the fastest team. But when you put all of their attributes together, they are truly a very good basketball team. And and they're young. Yes. They have, uh, I believe, four freshmen on the on the roster. The JV team has done an excellent job this year. Most of the games have been blowouts. But because they are young, you see Coach Cesari pretty animate animated whenever she's she's coaching here because she she's got a lot of coaching to do it's not like we can rely on the no. seniors that no. we normally do and that is what she does she coaches and so there's now richland looking for two or three offensive sets there's kinsey with an another uh another chance at it and does not fall so uh, a good offense set for them but again they end up with zero mall's going to take the long one that's going to bounce around not in uh a little, little smack there for uh, Berkey, but she recovers. Sharada's uh, working hard on that block, trying to keep Kinsey from getting that ball. As we said, she's averaging almost 18 points a game. Uh, they need to keep her the, the ball out of her hands as much as possible. Need a bucket. So inbounds to Kinsey. Oh, a block there by Henderson. Oh, she's going to try to go off the leg, but misses her, but it stays in uh, play. And now we got, now we got, oh, I think it's going to be a technical on Coach Johnson. He, uh, the official had enough listening to him, and so a technical. Now he's going to have to sit for the rest of the game. Four stills gets two foul shots and the ball. Alexi Henderson will be attempting those two foul shots. I did not, I was watching the action as it came down to court. I did not see Coach Johnson get up or what What prompted the uh, um, technical. Yeah, I, I didn't see it either. I was doing the same thing, following the, following the play. I thought Ford Seals had a fast break going there, and uh, but he apparently said something he shouldn't have. So, um, <laughs> you ever think about that, Matt, what you just said? Maybe, uh, you know, sometimes a, a girl is going in for a layup and, and another girl comes and almost intentionally, unintentionally fouls her and prevents the, the layup from happening. How about a coach uh, getting a little out of line when it's obvious you're going to score a basket and gets a technical? Uh, probably not ever uh, thought about that before. Yeah, but never uh, really thought about that before, but uh, you I know what, if you're going to get one, that may not be a bad time to get uh, one. Okay, so Ford Seals going to get the ball in bounce with the 10 point lead. Addison Schrader is going to go deep. That one's going to bounce around and in. 
Good shot by Serato. And so Forest Hills with the press. Miley Godola came up and she did, a little hand check. Uh, and so foul on Miley. Okay, thought about that technical situation we were just talking about. All right, Matt. So officially, officiating wise, if we got a situation where the coach is in your ear inappropriately and we've got a fast break going, I would think that the proper mechanic should be a delayed whistle till after the play by the offense going down for a layup is completed. You can call a technical any time. You can go right back to it and, and say, okay, you got a technical for what you did three seconds ago and delay the whistle. Yeah, you would know that better than me, being the uh, ex-official that you are. Um, I do football, I never did basketball. Uh, we are definitely taught, you know, when we have something on the sideline, let, let, it, let it go to the next play, but you know, basket, basketball is a, a lot different of a sport than football is. So we got, again, we have um, that, that weave to score. It's gonna be a foul on Richland. Laney Marshall. Laney Marshall, number one. That's gonna be her third. Again, she's, she's been a force all game. You don't wanna see her pick up number four or five if, if you're a Richland fan, that's for sure. So Morgan Godola with the ball in her hands. Uh, freshman, uh, two freshmen out on the floor with, with uh, Morgan Godola and Ava Mall. Uh, I'll tell you what, you mentioned the JV team. Uh, one of the first games of the year I got to watch, and man, I was impressed with those two freshmen. They're just, they have the speed, they don't, they don't stop. They're, they're the type of ball player that Coach Sari loves, but uh, you know, you look at the little freshmen that you are, that they are, and you, you weren't sure that what you were going to get there, but no fear. And talking about no fear, right on key, uh, Julia Trunta for three. In, pass into Kinsey. She's a force in there. And so there's a foul on Henderson. Um, Kinsey, Kinsey got any girl on that floor by probably three inches, at, at least, I'm thinking. Um, so they get the ball down low to her. Uh, that, that's a tough stop for the Rangers. And so she gets fouled and the bonus shot. She has 12 points coming in right now to this foul shot. Call it 13. The so Forest Hills is up at a 13 point lead. Five seconds left, see if we can get a shot off before the buzzer. Lexi's gonna drive down, she's gonna get a little try for a layup, but blocked by Laney Marshall, and that is the end of the quarter. Forest Hills Lady Rangers 45, Richland Lady Rams 32. Nice 13 point lead. Matt, uh, Coach Aceri was honored back in uh, 2020 and she achieved her 400th win back in March of 2019. Now, putting that in perspective, out of all the area coaches, she leads in wins with, she's about 450 right now. The only other coach with over 400 wins is John Hahn, the coach from Bishop McCourt. I'm talking about girls high school coaches right now in the area. John Hahn, the Bishop McCourt longtime coach, is also in the 400 area, but I'm guessing right now with this season going on, about 30 wins behind Coach Cesare. Yeah, it, I mean, you can't say enough about Coach Cesare. And, uh, you know, you look at, at, at how all the girls are circled around her right now, all of them just very intently listening. Uh, kids, they know she's a she's a person of respect. Along with her assistants, uh, Scott Lashinsky just was very adamant in, in that huddle, um, leading leading talk. Uh, and uh, Mike Cristofoli has been uh, just an assistant for a long, long time in this area. Um, it's nice having him back on the staff again. So the Rams start the fourth quarter with the ball. Shot from the corner from Matovich. That does not go. McCleary comes up with the rebound. Shrado sets a nice pick to give uh, Rissa Britt some, some room to operate. And we're going to stand and, and kill some time. Uh, while we're killing some time, 
you know, my nephew plays uh, JV basketball down in Maryland. They actually instituted a shot clock this year. It's a 30 second shot clock. We, we've debated that for years. Uh, National Federation finally put that in. Pennsylvania decided not to do that. Um, but I'm thinking that's gonna be coming here real soon, maybe as early as next year. So four seals prevents a, a Richland score there. Britt over to Berkey. She's gonna fire up another three and hit it. Oh, excuse me, two point basket. Just can't tickled the line. Yeah, can't see that far corner from where we are, but officials had a, a good view of her foot on the line. So three-point attempt there by Richland. Does not go, but Laney Marshall with the offensive board. She gets her own offensive board after that. So uh, third chance opportunity for Richland. Laney's going to make a move. She's going to drive that right side. She's going to go up, and she got her offensive board again after the block by Sherado, and she's going to shoot and get fouled and put it in. Five opportunities for Richland. That can't happen the for the Lady Rangers. A little mix up there. The official wasn't sure the ball went in, but a good piece of officiating there. The uh, referee, Clark Adelman, came over and said the ball did go in. So instead of two shots, she's going to get the basket and one. So she nails that one. Cuts that lead to 12 points, 47 to 35, with six minutes and 20 seconds to go in the ball game. Lexi Henderson from deep. Horse Hills loves their threes. They always have. And they've, you know, luckily make a lot of them. Uh, but whenever they don't, luckily they play really good defense. Not luckily, I guess I should say good thing that they play <laughs> really good defense. Uh, like Arissa Britt did right there, picking off that pass. And she's going to drive the lane. Sherado back to Berkey. Berkey with a long pass into Britt in the middle of the key. I don't know how she got it through there. Britt goes up for the shot and she gets fouled. This past weekend, uh, the Lady Rangers went to Chambersburg and played in a tournament there. They, they played uh, Garetti for the first, the first day on Saturday. Or on Saturday and uh, they handled Garetti as a team from Maryland pretty, hand, pretty easily. Then they played Imhotep Prep. That is a charter school from uh, the Philadelphia area and are always in the running for state championships. And, uh, you know, you have debates always about the uh, charter school, private school thing. But they played them, and they were taller, they were faster, they were more athletic. But the Rangers were able to beat them by, I think it was three points. Yeah, it was. Uh, I, I did not go down in the game, uh, but I, I was falling on social media. And, man, that's, that's a quality, quality win for, for Forrest Still It's there. So ball tipped away by Sherrado. Berkey goes down and get it. That's going to be a jump ball between her and number three, Lincoln Roman. Coach Cesari told me earlier, the, one of our thinking uh, modes in, in going down there and doing this is, okay, girls, win or lose, you can play against the best teams in the state. You can do that. And then when you come up with a big win like that, it has to instill some confidence. But <laughs> in the next sense, she emphasized how important not taking, a, you know, getting too cocky about the whole situation, not taking a team like Richland lightly. And, whoa. Yep. Good call by the official yep. there. A dangerous move by Kinsey, to, uh, you know, setting up for that, that potential block charge call with her with three fouls. But um, the offensive charge, uh, Kinsey wants a one and one for that, but you don't get a one and one for uh, on an offensive charge. Um, Marissa Britt ran into her and she definitely charged her, and it was a, a good call. And uh, looking up at the board, it says that that's Marissa Britt's fourth foul, uh, which I didn't realize she was that high. But one more, and she gets to sit down. Um, Coach and Sari's going to leave her on the floor with 5:05 left. Uh, hopefully, she does not pick up her fifth foul. Nice press break there by Richland, right middle of the floor. Uh, good job by Olivia McCleary cutting that one off. And that's going to cause a charge by Lena Roman. What? I missed it. <laughs> uh, she went down and, and her knee hit the court. Not, the Richland fans wanted uh, Olivia for a, uh, a block there, um, which. I thought eh, there was going to be a travel call. 50-50, they did call the travel. Okay. Um, 
with her with her knee going to the ground. But uh, foul on number one there, Laney Marshall, and that's going to be her fourth. Again, uh, Richland, uh, you can't keep talking about fouls, but Richland can't afford to have uh, Marshall or Kinsey foul out of this game. Kinsey comes back into the game now. She has four fouls also. Four stills is up by 13, 48, 35. 446 left in the fourth. So Aston Trotta makes the first one of the one and one. She earns a bonus shot. And she makes a second, good shooting. Pass is gonna get away, oh, that one tipped away and then a foul by Arissa Britt and that's gonna be number five for her. So five fouls for Arissa, she's gonna have to go out. Uh, Julia Chunta is gonna check in. Uh, that ends Arissa's night with four points and five fouls. So uh, Berkey and Chunta are gonna have to handle the point guard duties for the last four minutes and 40 seconds. And Matovich makes the first one. Uh, one and one. One and one. Fun little time there for uh, Essen Sherado. Sh she, she wasn't sure that that was a one and one. Um, so now second shot there for Matovich. And a little short on that one. Sherado gets the rebound. She goes round, almost lost the ball, but good job by her to hold on to it. Chunt is up to Berkey. Berkey's gonna drive. Oh. She, she had a chance with Kinsey one on one, middle of the key. I think she got away with a double dribble there. Oh, I missed that. Um, but I, I was looking at her thinking, you know, Kinsey's got four and, uh, you know, a chance to put pressure on to get her fifth. Uh, Sherado there is going to get a little bit uh, of, of a travel and ball turned over. Miley Godola is going to come in for um, Sherado. And again, Four Seals got real small there. Uh, Livy McCleary being the tallest one on the court. Uh, she's just a little shorter than uh, Kenzie. So Richland keeps on spinning that ball around. Marshall back to Matovich. Matovich is going to drive the lane. She's going to hit the runner up, but it does not go. And Lexi Henderson with the rebound. Lexi with the inside out move. Oh, and a block by Kenzie. That one was clean. Definitely not a fifth foul on there. Double stack set for the Rangers. Get out to Henderson, she thought about the three. Step back, nope, that one does not connect with Godola. Kinsey got her hand in the way. Now Marshall's gonna bring it down. Showing off her ball handling moves. She could, that girl can play. Yeah, just an extra little hop step in, in there. Definitely a travel. Yep. Dole is going to bring the ball down. Four stills with a 14 point lead. Three and a half left. A little bit of a slowdown now for the Rangers, and the Rams are going to come out and uh, try to force the, uh, force the action. So, again, there's this weave. Both teams are in the one on one. As a matter of fact, next foul by the Rangers, Richland will be shooting a double bonus. So killing time again. Richland is putting on pressure. They're trying. They're they're trying to get the turnover. Ooh, big screen there by Miley Godola. That catcher is not afraid of contact. But Deanna Berkey in attempting to make that pass stepped on the out of bounds line. Ball turned over to Richland. A lot of time came off that clock. That that's a good thing in favor of the Rangers. Anna Berkey, she got the hand, didn't, didn't get the steal, but got the tip away. Matovich trying to find a lane to drive as she's been doing all game long. Oh, a nice drop pass to Kinsey, and she's gonna put it in for two. 
slick little uh, draw pass between two uh, four Hills defenders. Kinsey leads all scorers tonight with 15 points. So again, Ford Hills trying to draw out time. Right now, there was 2.20 on the clock when that started, but a foul there on number three, Lake and Roman. That'll send Miley Godula to the line. One and one. Both teams will be in the double bonus on the next foul. Checking back in for the Rangers is the two freshmen, uh, Morgan Godola and Ava Mall. Timeout by Richland. Got a moment. We always like to thank Mr. Jay Elias for recording this, editing this, trying to make me and you sound as good as we possibly can. Sometimes that's a tougher job than others. Good luck uh, with that. Camera, we got uh, Kim Hostetler, who teaches down our elementary and does a lot of announcing for us for the elementary event. So we thank her on the center camera. And we got Aiden Carr on one camera and we got Haley Vaught on the other camera. So uh, thank you. And uh, I hope that you guys saw, we didn't quite mention earlier in the game, but um, our mascot, the Ranger was walking around during the first and third quarter. So um, nice seeing uh, our, our new mascot. Uh, I know Coach Cesari, she, she does so much for this school besides just coach basketball, but she was, you know, really pushed for a lot of fundraising to uh, get that mascot. Uh, Mrs. Raptosh was around. She was also very helpful in, in getting us that um, the, enough funding for that for that mascot. So uh, I know the, the, the elementary kids kept coming up and giving high fives, and it's really nice for the community. Two minutes, 15 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Four stills is up by a dozen, 50 to 38. And you know, they 12 points, uh, two minutes, 15 seconds sounds like a lot, but it, it's a possibility that we can have a comeback by Richland. But if it doesn't happen, one thing I could say about this game, I think that if, if four stills does prevail, it's more like a winning ugly type of situation. It was that they, you know, their, their best performance, uh, but the scrappy Rangers that they are, they're coming through again, and they're young. A little bit of a mismatch there with uh, Kinsey scoring on uh, the younger Godola. The Richland now going to attack this weave a little bit more, trying to get the ball out of their hand, not let Forest Hills but knock off as much time as, as they have been. Um, also, uh, <sighs> Forest Hills, uh, man, two shots there by Maul. Neither one fell, but... Um, you know, coach does say weave, but weave to score. That was a, a, a layup opportunity. You take those even though they're trying to kill time. Absolutely. And an offensive board by Kinsey. Oh, surprisingly, that doesn't fall. So four seals with the ball, again with the opportunity to eat clock. And Richland's going to uh, foul Maul, and she's going to get the double bonus at the line. That was uh, Manovich with the foul for Richland. That was her second. The leading scorer for uh, four steals is Alexi Henderson with uh, 12 points. And her, her average as a leading scorer for the Rangers is 14.7, so she's just about there. That one rims out. I think the uh, coach is going to remind Ava, put a little bit more arc on that, give it, a, give it a little bit better of a chance to fall in. She did put more arc, but a little bit harder, but uh, Julia Chunta comes up with the offensive board. Forest Hill's gonna work clock again. Chunta back to Maul. She's gonna kick it over to Henderson. Henderson's uh, going to kill it down to 50 seconds. Uh, foul by Matovich there. She gave a little bump towards half court. Gonna give Lexi a chance to add to her total. I always hated as an official, as a fan, 
whenever a, a team is ahead by a lot and they can come out and just intentionally, unintentionally foul at the end. However, it is a strategy that is very important when the game is close. And in, in this case, the Richland Rams are, the Lady Rams are coming out and they are making an attempt at stealing the ball. If they foul, they don't care. And that's a great strategy. Uh, but, you know, they got to be aggressive because they want to come back. Yeah, you just can't let the, the off, without, without a shot clock, you can't just let the offense right. just wind and wind and wind. Uh, but helping the Rams is number three, Lake and Roman putting three in. So four seals with the ball, trying to kill the last 28 seconds. Henderson's going to hold on to it. She's going to dribble. Hands it off to Godola, and that's, I don't know what you're going to call here. They're going to call the push. That's a, that's the correct call, but. Yep, you got to have something. I didn't know if it was going to be backcourt. They are going to call the push. Not sure what was going to end that there. Foul on Matovic. She's picked up most of these uh, here as they're trying to stop the clock. That's her fourth. Um, next foul by uh, Marshall, Matovic, or Kinsey will put them out of the game. There's eight twenty seconds left, so not that big of a deal, but. Um, Morgan leaves that foul shot a little short. Uh, checking back in for Richland is number 11, Jalen Johns. Lainey Marshall coming out, did a very good job at a great oh, game. She, uh, she really impressed me. When, when Coach Sari told you before the game about you know how, how good of a player she is, she was right. I, 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 you know I agree what? We, with the assessment. We probably didn't uh, emphasize this enough. She's a sophomore. Yeah. She's a sophomore. A very tall sophomore, yeah. too. Jump ball goes to Richland. 12 seconds on the clock. Four seals up by 10, 53 to 43. And Richland inbounds it, and the Rangers aren't quitting. They're contesting the inbounds pass. Yep. The Morgan tip that one out of bounds. And cross court pass there. Goes over to Johns. Entry pass with two Kinsey. Give her two more points. She's had a really nice night also for the Rams as uh, she was the leading scorer of the game. But that sets the final. If your four skills Lady Rangers 53, your original Lady Rams. 45. A hard fought, hard fought game. Good, uh, good effort by both teams. And I can see why the coaches said about the Richland Lady Rams team. They are a up and coming team. Yeah, it, I mean that is. Uh, anytime you get a Laurel Highland victory, that's a tough victory. And and, and they proved it again today. Uh, now we see Jordan Griffith out on the court with the I Can Cup as Forest Hills has earned out with the sideline cancer victory in the game. So they're going to take some pictures for social media. Follow sideline cancer on Instagram. That's, they're on, um, that's their biggest platform for social media. Uh, so uh, congrats to the Forest Hills team. Uh, they're gonna also hold the signs uh, for the families that we are supporting here. Uh, again, just a great event. Glad Coach Siri uh, and, and Coach Muscovy helped bring this here. Uh, they've, they've known Jordan Griffin for a long time. Um, you know, raising raising money to try to beat cancer, just uh, just a fantastic uh, event. And, and uh, it looks like we might even have a total for them here if Jordan's handing out numbers. Let's see what we got here. It's like the price is right. <laughs> Look at that, $2,300 we raised for the families of the community fighting this terrible, terrible disease. Uh, that's just uh, just so thankful for the Four Hills community to, to put up what they did. Great job, guys, um, and a great event. Uh, and taking their pictures, and um, let's call it a night, Jim. Let's wrap it up. Great, great event, great basketball game, and... Uh, what, what you said, though, about the Forest Hills community, it, it is something. When there's something that they need to come together, together for, they do. And I'm so proud to be a member of this Forest Hills community. Thank you, Matt, for a great job tonight, and uh, hope to see you again soon. A hey, great job to you, Jim. Thank you, guys. Thanks for tuning in, and good night.